everybody, Erica Sarwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. This week over at my blog, I've got Easter projects galore for you. I've been using the super cute Easter Friends stamp set from the, let's see if I can remember the name, the official name, January to June 2022 Spring Stampin' Up Mini Catalog. <laughs> anyway, it's available right now. It's so cute. Look at those images. I'm going to show you how to make an Easter basket. Um, I found, you know, these, you find them all over the place. These truffle eggs, delicious. Um, we're going to actually use the pretty pillow box die right here. This was in the last mini catalog, the holiday catalog, but it's still available online. And I'm going to show you how to make this little basket um, using this die. I've done a lot of the die cutting ahead of time um, just to save us some time on the video. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is get thick white cardstock that's going to make your project um, heavy duty it can hold the candy it's not going to you know collapse you want to cut out two of these but all you really need is this top section right here so i went ahead and cut the full uh, piece just so you could see which piece i'm cutting off but you know if you cut your cardstock the right size then you only you will only um you won't waste a lot of cardstock. Now, I also have done it with this beautiful Tulip Feel Designer Series paper. Um, again, this is from the Spring Catalog. And I'm going to adhere it, adhere both of them to the white, the white pieces. And the reason why we don't just, you know, only cut the DSP and use that is because you want your box to be sturdy. You want your basket to be sturdy. So by putting these two pieces together, you're making um, the whole piece really sturdy. So we're gonna glue those together like that with Tombow. You could also use your adhesive sheets when you cut these out, um, put an adhesive sheet behind it. That way then it's just a sticker and you can just um, lay it down. All right, now for the box part, let's bring the Simply Scored in. You're going to need a piece of thick white that is three and a half by ten and a half. On the long side, you want to cut it at or score it, excuse me, score it at three and a half, five, eight and a half, and ten, and then turn it and score it at two. We're making a really simple box to put on uh, the inside. We're going to sandwich it in between those two pieces that we just made. Now, down here, um, you've got a, a wider section and a, a na more narrow section. The narrow section is the bottom of your box. At the end of that narrow section, you want to cut off this little rectangle right here. Okay? And then you're just going to snip all of those lines. Now, normally when I make a box, I cut the corners off of all the flaps, but this box isn't going to be seen, so we don't really need to worry about it being perfect. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to burnish all those lines with my bone folder. Probably should have done that before I cut it, but that's okay. You can do it either way. All right. Now... I'm gonna use, let's see, I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal since that's what I have. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of stamp and seal right there and I'm gonna fold this over like that, end over end. Okay, now just fold in those bottom tabs and we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive here and here. Fold that into those squares. Now. I probably, if I'm going to make these to give these out, I'm not going to use Stamp and Seal. I would use Stamp and Seal Plus, or uh, even Tombow or Tear and Tape. But since this is what I have sitting here, that's what we're going to use. Okay, so there's your box. Really, I mean, simple. Now I want to put this on here. So I'm going to use Tombow again because I, I just want to make sure that it stays flush with the box. All right, and we're going to match that bottom edge right there, press that in, kind of look at the back to make sure that it's centered. Well, we've come off the edge, let's do that again. There we go. Okay, now we'll do this side.
and take this piece and lay it right there. Make that even and press that down. And there's your ma the main construction of your box. Now I've cut a piece of basic white that is one by eight and a half. And I just curled it a little bit there with my bone folder. And I'm gonna put this on with Tombow. And let's see, I've got my clothes pins here. I like to use clothes pins to hold things down when they need a little bit of drying time. I think I can squeeze this clothes pin in like that. And get that nice and centered. And we'll add another clothes pin. All right, while that's drying, let's make the cute tag that goes in the front. I decided to pull in the tulip dies. Since we're using the tulip designer series paper, the tulip dies were perfect. And I will admit, when you first look at these, they can be very intimidating. Um, so I just cut them out and kind of looked at them to see what they look like. You know, sometimes things look different when you cut them out. And I thought, okay, now that makes sense. See how these dies are connected? I was wondering like, why are those connected? Well, it just makes this really easy. You're gonna just fold these little petals in like that. Hello, so cool. Now, um, I've got this just individual petal. So I'm gonna put that in with a dimensional, okay? On the inside like that. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of Tombow and glue that to the front. Again, I'm gonna use one of my little clothes pens to hold it. So put a little bit of glue there and a little bit of glue there. Whoops, I put too much. I always put too much. All right, now grab your clothes pen and just squish it like that. All right, so we've got that one. There's also this one that's really pretty. Um, you just really, only need to put that on with a dimensional, I think. I, I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do these tulips, but just in playing with them for the first time, this is what I came up with. Let's get that on there a little bit better. You can also kind of vary the colors, add ink to your cardstock to make it have variations. This one was really pretty too, I liked this one. Fold that in and look at that. Let's put that one in the middle that dimensional. I just was really uh, pleasantly surprised with this, the design of these dies. They looked complicated, but then really they are not complicated at all. Stampin' Up! has made it really easy because the, you know, the flowers are connected to each other. All right, one more clothespin. And now let's do our adorable little duck. He's going to be in memento black on thick white. And I'm going to color him with Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blend, but let me grab my heat tool. I like to heat set anything that I'm going to color with a yellow Stampin' Blend. Uh, for some reason, I just find that for some reason, the, the yellow picks up that black a little bit. None of the other colors do it to, for me, but uh, the yellows do. So if you have that problem, um, just grab your heat, heat tool and just kind of set that ink, it dries it really good. Not that it's wet, but if you ever have a problem where your ink is picking up, your Stampin' Blend is picking up the ink pad, try that. All right, I'm just gonna add some light, Daffodil Delight, and then we'll use dark to add in. See where all these little hash marks are? The artist has kind of told us where there's shadow, so we can intensify the color a little bit there. Okay, and then you can go back with your Daffodil Delight and blend it all so it's kind of not so harsh there. Isn't he just the cutest? He's my favorite image in this stamp set. Dark pale papaya for his 
beak and feet. And then we're gonna cut them out. I'm gonna use my paper snips and I'm just gonna stay right on the outside you know what, the first thing you need to do is cut off all the extra cardstock because that really does help. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors, my paper snips, and stay on the outside of him, leaving a little white border. He does have some little lines that kind of poke out. I'm not real worried about those. If I cut them off, it's okay. Most of him is gonna be covered with the, well, not most of them, a lot of his body is gonna be covered with that uh, rectangle that we use for the sentiment and this is a kind of a busy tag there's so much to look at that if you aren't perfect with your cutting I don't think anybody would even notice so don't worry about that all right now there he is okay see how I left like a little white border around the edge of him okay now I had a time I cut out two garden green stems and two garden green leaves from those tulip dies. I used the wrong green on my original and I didn't even notice it until I was getting ready for the video. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, now I also have a stitched so sweetly basic white shape that's retiring at the end of, well, Mar uh, May 1st or 2nd is the last day it'll be available. So make sure if you don't have the stitched so sweetly dies, you get them. They're so good. All right, I'm using this sentiment that says, may your days blossom with joy and happiness. All right, we are ready to layer things down. I'm gonna start with the um, stems. I can get my Tombow. My Tombow's getting a lot of action today. Usually I don't use it very much. I prefer to use my Stampin' Seal. Okay, let's do like that. And then we're gonna put these cool little leaves kind of over like that. And we'll put this one in here like that. And now let's grab, I really like this one. I think we'll put this one right here. And this one, I think I like this one the best. This one's gonna need to go up above. So let's bring over our box and let's put our tag on because we're gonna need to adhere part of that tulip on the front of the box. Now notice this, I'm gonna cut those off too long. There we go. And why don't we use a dimensional for that tulip? Put it right here, like that. And then some dimensionals for our little duck. Let's see. Let's put his head back like that. And then we'll put some dimensionals on the back of our sentiment. This is the stitched rectangle, by the way, if I didn't mention that, the stitched rectangle dies. And then last but not least, we've got to add our ribbon. And I am using this window pane ribbon. It's a really fantastic ribbon. And we'll just tie a little bow, cut the end off at an angle. and grab a glue dot and put that right there. And there you have it. Adorable, adorable. And um, this box holds about three of those, but you could fill it up with any kind of candy. You could put some Easter grass in there and that would make a really fun treat. All right, make sure you click the link here on YouTube to go back to my blog for those measurements and the link back to the previous day where I had three projects using Easter Friends. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.